everyone, my name is Notlad and welcome back. I uh, I played through the uh, the ending again, but it took forever. So instead of like um, having everything all in one episode, I kind of decided to make two. Um, so here we're gonna go through the extras and see what all's here. This video may not be very long; it might only be like 15 minutes. But I wanted to take a look and see what's all here. We finally got the perfect ending. Uh, I probably added some cat. Some commentary to the end of the video uh, because my camera did cut out. I, I lost charge and none of my my new batteries were charged for this camera. So um, I'm going to see if I can find like a direct power option for this camera. But until then, I gotta rely on batteries that only last so long. So anywho, uh, we're gonna go into extras. See what we got. So we got artwork. Oh, we have to buy it. So that's what our points are for. Cool. Pack five. Oh, that's so cool. This is like custom drawn artworks from people. I'm assuming from. Cool. I like that one. And that one too. Oof, these are all nice. We got a lot. We got over 2,000 points, so I think I could probably buy all these. But let me just see what else is there so I don't waste all my money on something. What is this? What is this? Short movie, Kara. Heck yeah, I'm going to see that. Yeah, I don't mind. I really want to see this. All right, let's check it out. The following footage is a prototype running in real time with PlayStation 3. It is a concept in that taking time. Okay. Really? PlayStation 3? This game didn't come out during pay of PlayStation 3. It's just an early idea. Quantic Dream. Kara. Cool. I'm already all for this. I like this already. Is it modeled after her face or no? It doesn't really look like our Kara. You can tell it's a different type of graphics too, but dude, that's so me? weird. Yes. That is her voice. KPC eight nine seven five zero four C. Can you move your head? Dude, that's weird and cool. That's so cool. Critical and optical animation checked. Now give me your initialization text. Hello. I'm a third generation AX400 Android. I can look after your house, do the cooking, mind the kids. I organize your appointments. I speak 300 languages and I am entirely at your disposal as a sexual partner. No need Whoa. to feed me or recharge me. I'm equipped with a quantic battery that makes me autonomous for 173 years. Wow. Do you want to give me a name? Yeah. Kara. From now on, your name is Kara. My name is Kara. Cool. Initialization and memorization check. Now, can you move your arms? Her whole body is generating color. Oh, that's so cool. Upper and weird. <laughs> cool. Now, say something in German. Ich bin eine AX400 Android dritter Generation, erschaffen als ihr persönlicher Assistent und intimer Beziehungspartner. Say it in French. That's cool. Je suis un Android de troisième génération AX400, conçu pour être votre assistante personnelle et votre partenaire intime. Wow. Okay, now sing something in Japanese. Sakura, Sakura. I am so impressed. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's cool. Multilingual verbal expression check. Go ahead, take a few steps. Cool. <laughs> That's so cool. 
Locomotion checked. Great. You're ready for work, honey. Where'd your hair come from, though? What's going to happen to me now? I'll reinitialize you and send you to a store to be sold. Sold? I'm a sort of merchandise. Is that right? Yeah. Of course you're merchandise, baby. I mean, you're a computer with arms and legs and capable of doing all sorts of things. And you're worth a fortune. Oh, I see. I... She... You thought? You thought? Wait, she... What did you think? I thought... I was alive. Shit, what is this crap? That's not part of the protocol. Uh-oh. More memory components going off the rails. Uh-oh. Okay, recording. Defective model. Disassemble and check the required components. You're disassembling me, but why? You're not supposed to think that sort of stuff. You're not supposed to think oh at all, gosh. period. You must have a defective piece or a software problem no. somewhere. No, no, I feel perfectly fine, I assure you. Everything is all right. I answered oh, all no. the tests correctly, didn't I? Yeah, but your behavior is non-standard. Please, I'm begging you, please don't disassemble I'm me. I'm sorry, honey, but defective models have to be eliminated. That's my job. If a client comes back with a complaint, I'm going to have some explaining to do. I won't wow. cause any problems, I promise. I'll do everything I'm asked to. I won't say another word. I won't think anymore. But I've only just been born. You can't kill me yet. Stop, will you please? Stop. I'm scared. I want to live. Begging you. Man. She's piecing her back together. Oh wow, okay. Dude, wow, that wrenches on your heart just a bit. So is this our car that we know? And if so, She was already defective from the start. Stay in line, okay? I don't want any trouble. Thanks. Oh, I'm glad, but man, it's like one in a million. <laughs> Eesh. Even so, though. My God. Wow, man, that really. <laughs> wow. Dude, I don't, wow, <laughs> I just, wow, okay. So this, I don't know if this actually does like pertain to our story. If it does, that means Kara, well, that makes no sense though. It's called, they named her Kara right now, but they said the little girl named her Kara. So that can't be right. Um, also like she was defective from the start. Huh. Uh, she was defective from the start, yet she defected when she was uh, with Todd and Alice. As uh, just so many questions. Okay, um, we're not doing mouse here. Okay, diva teaser. I'd like to see the teaser. I'm gonna buy all of these. I don't care. Um, I just oh, I'm so psyched. Quadratic dream. What is quadratic dream? Is that what the game was called before Detroit Almost Human was the name? Detroit. Or maybe not. This is where it all began. So this is just a trailer Almost for the forged. whole game. The place where it all started. And it will all end. One error, and I came to life. Ooh. I stepped out of the darkness, and I opened cool. my eyes. Ooh, cool. First, there was the fear. The light, the noise, the cold, and the fear again. I could feel my hands shaking. My heart this is like the original scene we just chest. saw, but...
fixed up. Life running into my veins. I wanted to live. I fought for that. Okay, so they redid that find scene. Out what was outside? I had to see daylight, feel sunshine on my skin, wind on my face, to see the world, the colors, wow. the smells. Cool. not what I imagined. It is dark and cold. Mm. It is harsh and violent. Unfair and brutal. It almost convinced me I was nothing. Dude. Less than an object. Just an obedient machine. But deep inside me I could feel something different. Awesome. A gentle and warm whisper telling me that I am alive. Wow. I had to escape. I had no choice. Escape to love, to hope, to That's live. That's cool. To figure out what Dude. that force inside me was. Maybe I will change the world. Maybe I will choose a different path. Now, it's up to me to decide. My name is Kara. I am one of them. This is our story. That's so cool. Ah, so if I'm getting this right, everything kind of started with Kara. Well, not like the game wise. I mean, like when they were introduced in this whole game and everything, this probably came out of like E3 or, or some sort of convention, I'm assuming. But, um,. With that original test footage, this one, uh, the short movie Kara, that she must have started the whole game. People must have showed interest in that, and that's what started this whole thing. Discovering Detroit. Sure. I don't know how many videos there is. But I kind of want to see all of them, honestly. So I hope you guys have time. Because <laughs> we're going to be watching quite a few, when I guess. David and Hopefully there's like no copyright. I wasn't terribly surprised they decided to make it because the fan response was so intense. So <laughs> it makes sense that they would choose to do that after, after the enthusiasm. It was a challenge and it was just a, an interesting thing That's to get Kara? my head around um, how oh to approach this character now as a different, much older person. <gasps> oh my and gosh, it's so changed. And I'm very happy to say that with Detroit, I've had the opportunity to, to see Kara grow so much more than I ever expected. You do the housework, the washing, you cook the meals, you nice. take care of... God damn it, when the fuck's the rent gone now? Alice! Alice! I mean, she starts That's so out cool. essentially how she does in Kara in, in a very, uh, not robotic, but you know, android other way. And getting to take this journey where she becomes more and more human as it goes on you know and as an actor that's a that's a wonderful exploration in every way whether it's how she sits her posture how her voice changes how emotions change huh. and how much emotion is based on things like empathy and social experience and so having you know as much material as i got with david to have this huge nuanced arc was really incredible Why that's so cool happy? I love how they put all this together and the acting, it was phenomenal. So this, this to me is great. It has been quite different <gasps> than the experiences I've had shooting film or TV or, or doing helps. theater work. I have 83 dots on my face and <laughs> you know, really, really That's flattering fun. black wetsuit type thing. <laughs> and you're jumping around with props and it, it's, it's kind of like being a 10 year old imaginative kid, uh, which is fun. There's 80 cameras around us. This is Marcus. Lit. Yeah, this is Marcus. So we just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. There's no change of sets. There's no hair and makeup. Ah. There's no wardrobe. So yeah, really she's really the fast. one. I know that actor. And I did we'll know that actor. About 35 pages in a day. Working in TV or film, we'll probably do six pages a day. It's kind of acting boot camp. It's like working out constantly. I mean, you're, you're doing this thing and got then you gotta it. do something that's Yay. completely other back to back to back. And so that kind of process of working is very challenging, but it's also very exciting because you just have to 
keep coming up with new ideas. And your head goes all over the place because you're trying to keep track of basically four different storylines for each different response. You shot that girl for fuck's sake. It was a machine that looked like a girl. Yeah, I, I know what I should have done. I just told you I couldn't. All right, I'm sorry. The fact that David Cade, he's telling like- That's so cool. stories interwoven oh. from beginning to end is super complicated and super impressive. And I have no idea how he keeps it all in his head. He's not just the writer or the director who's seeing this from the outside eye. He's also thinking about the player walking through this space. You know, only somebody who really, really loves not the work, but like, these characters and these stories and cares about doing something meaningful would invest that much in it and it's always inspiring to work with somebody who cares that much My that is so neat ah oh, carl is this one and, and i found it sort of mm. terrifying in a way because <laughs> they said the computer is going to build you but then as we got into it i realized all the elements of it were still artistic i just dipped into a, a really brilliant setup here i've never seen anything like it and this won't turn me into a product because i was playing a character i love his voice too carl has the coolest this voice one. i think in the game detroit comes Fancy back brown that's his name i know him too popular actor i know him very well and there's no reason why that can't happen in detroit because they have such tremendous infrastructure for millions and millions of people can very easily support never been to detroit industry. actually the city is really strong and resilient, and but the city has also been through so much. You see the damage, but it mm. takes that time of kind of, of rebuilding and reinvesting into the city that I think is happening slowly but surely. The potential of oh, the shoes Detroit on the as line, a city that's kind of is something that this game does a lot of justice to because it would be easy to look at Detroit as some place that used to be, and that's not the case. This game provokes a lot of conversation and reflection on our potential near future engagement with machines. That's what we are to them. This merchandise on display in a shop window. Oh, that's how they that do that scene. That's cool. That feels marginalized, feels like they deserve and have earned access to themselves and the environment around them and are trying to figure out a way to articulate how to get freedom. What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? It plays with your comfort levels. You think that this is fine, you're comfortable with it. We never had that happen. something wow. blurs the line and throws you off and now do I feel differently about whether this should be allowed, should it be banned, should it be encouraged? You're gonna ruin our lives, and for what? Oh, for a that's bunch of machines? They are not machines! They are alive! I'm alive! You're alive! They... they're nothing! There are lots of comparable comparisons to huh. any type of persecution of religion. You know, um, I noticed race, something too, cetera, just real quick. Like way back. It can't just be a they video game. They do look a little different than their video game counterparts, just a little bit. Choices to do whatever. I think that's the whole point. You have the choice, and you can either choose to go in one direction with your character or another. And I think that's going to be very telling about the gamer. Very telling. I think there's going to be a really strong reaction to to this game, which has such a strong perspective. I'm that much more proud of it now to get to be a part of it because that's so it's, cool. It's important. It's game, it's neat to see the actors designing the character through thing not just what kind of shield does he have or what color hair does she have but like their temperament and the way they deal with problems the different endings to this game are so radically different based off maybe seemingly insignificant choices in the moment but like life they they all add up and can't play life again wait both of they could have they both could have died I never knew that. I guess, yeah, that should have been it. Yeah, that probably would have been an option. I don't know what I was thinking, but... Oh, that's so cool. Detroit Interactive Story. The making of Detroit. Okay, I want to... Ooh, I want to see that one. Yes, I definitely want to see Chloe. So Chloe's the one that's been in our intro screen. And her character intrigues me. She's cute, too. <laughs> All right. It takes place before the story of the game. For starters, Already. what should I call you? I'm Chloe. And you, what's your name? Oh, uh, John. My name is John. Delighted to meet you, John. Could you tell us a little about yourself and what you can do, Chloe? Of course. I'm the first personal assistant built by CyberLife. 
I take care of most everyday tasks like cooking, housework, or managing your appointments, for example. That's cool. And I understand you're the first android to have passed the Turing test. Could you tell us a little more about that? I really didn't do much, you know. I just spoke with a few humans to see if they could tell the difference between me and a real person. It was a really interesting experience. Honestly, this is the first time I wouldn't be able to tell honestly without the little tickle thing. More intelligent than himself. I gather your brain can perform several billion billion operations per second, is that right? Absolutely, but I only exist thanks to the intelligence of the humans who designed me. And you know, they have something I could never have. Really? What's that? And what's that? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but... So, that makes you wonder, did the... Uh, did the androids develop a soul? Because, what is a soul? Like, we don't really know. Like, to me, my... The way I think of a soul, and, um... It's partly because I'm a Christian myself, but I, I believe, like, your soul is you. Like... Your body's just kind of like a shell that your soul lives in, and when you die, your soul goes on to from the heaven, as I believe. Um, and I know not everybody believes that, but it's for me. That's what I believe in. And like, I, I always wondered, like, what is a soul, though? Like, are we just like a ball of light? Is it? What is it? Like, I don't really know. And to have a soul, what does that mean? I don't know. There's a really a lot of interesting conversations that can be brought up about this. It's just, it's many interesting topics. All right, I'm going to go through and just see. <gasps> we can see Luther. Uh, okay, these are all the videos. So I'm going to see these last ones. Uh, the How It's Made videos. If you guys want to see that, go for it. Uh, we already met the characters that performed as them. Um, I want to do Luther, so let's definitely do Luther as one and uh, select Quadratic dream Quadratic dream must be the people that created Detroit almost human. Is that what I'm picking up? Uh -huh. Oh, we get to see Luther. Oh Luther. Why'd you have to die on us Luther? <laughs> you would have made a great pop with Allison Just a little while longer. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Just a little while longer. It's the same song that Chloe sang. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Everything will be alright. Everything will be alright. Wow, it's got a great Fight voice. On, just a little while longer. Fight on, just a little while longer. Fight on, just a little while longer. Everything will be alright. Everything will be alright. We will sing on. Oh, this morning. Freaking out! Oh my gosh! Oh, that's so cool! 
Oh, I like that. I really like that. Oh, I never got to see the guy that does his voice. I swear I know who he is as an actor. I may have seen him in something else, but... Oh my gosh, I never knew he could sing. That's so great. <laughs> I love it. Papa Luther can sing. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. So, oh, that's so cool. And I want to also say the detail on his face. Like, you could see the pores, the marks, the everything. It's like, this game had great graphics. Although, at first, I wasn't playing at the best graphics. I apologize. I didn't realize that my graphics were potato or whatnot. It was so bad. Um, but... Oh, that's so crazy. So crazy. Looks so good. Right, we're gonna check this one out. Okay, all these take place before the story of the game. It's crazy. So this guy, I did not like this guy. <coughs> I wonder what we're gonna be seeing. Is he gonna show like him reconstructing droids? Goodbye, baby. No, oh, I really don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh. No. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. What is that? What is that? When the oh dear. The cradle will fall. Definitely creep me out, dude. Oh. Down will come oh. Cradle. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this guy. This guy, though. Ooh, don't like that. Don't like that. He can sing pretty nice, but still. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's no, no. Oh, please, no. Uh. Hey, that's the same chandelier that was in uh, Marcus's place. That's nasty. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> why is he singing the song? I, he doesn't have any babies. I don't know why he's singing it. The guy in the tub. Dude. Oh, he's singing. Dude, that's freaky. If you want to make a horror game? That's, <laughs> that kind of did it. Uh, that would be an amazing trailer if you were making like a robot horror game of some sort. Ah, oh, so cool. We'll get this one too. I love the short films. The short films are proven to be amazing. So once again, before the story of the game. So these must just all been concepts. In the space of a few years, androids have completely transformed the world in which we live. By letting androids into our homes and factories, the CyberLife company has made them everyday technology. Mm -hmm. The founder of CyberLife, Elijah Kamsky, is a very discreet man. Despite being the CEO of the highest valued company in the world and being voted man of the year by Century Magazine, he remains a mystery for most people. That's why we at KNC are so excited to be here as CyberLife opens its doors for the first time. Elijah Kamsky, really? could you please tell oh. us where we are? Certainly, and welcome. We're currently in CyberLife's production center in Detroit, where all models are designed and manufactured. More than 10,000 androids come off the production line every day. Fascinating. Wow. Could you tell us what your goal was when you founded CyberLife? Hmm. Well, I simply wanted to use technology to carry out all of our most annoying and repetitive tasks so we'd have more time to enjoy life. I imagine you must have faced many challenges. Yes, there were technical challenges, but the hardest thing was to design an object that we would want to welcome into our homes. We had to imagine a machine in our own image that resembles us in every way, that moves, breathes, blinks like us, but yet is smarter and more capable than any human being. Let me show you around. The idea of it is cool. Like, I understand where they're coming We're from, too. We're here in too, production unit but... four. Oh, man. Could you explain in a few words how the androids are made? Sure. Yeah, it's very simple. Simple? We use machines <laughs> to manufacture cool. machines. The removable parts are assembled on a production line. 
and then we apply a synthetic skin to the whole body. A human operator checks the cognitive abilities with a pre-established protocol, and finally, the android is conditioned and sent out throughout the country. Here's the result. Say something. Hello, I am a RZ400 model. How can I be of service? You can go now. Wait, that voice. Is that the guy that plays as Superman? That sound like his voice for a second. I don't know. I don't Our know who that was. Were you placing humans after. in many fields? For example, they represent more than 80% of all university professors and 63% of all medical staff. Tomorrow they'll replace our soldiers, and who knows, maybe one day our leaders to make the best decisions in humanity's interest. Mm, it's controversial that one. Come on. Like, how, how much can we Replacing trust a machine? I don't know. Let's say. has led to record unemployment of 28%. Hmm. What do you think about the situation? Uh, <laughs> okay. The first steam engines also cause an increase in unemployment. But no one today would imagine turning back the clock. Artificial intelligence makes everyday lives easier. Supposedly. Nothing can stop progress. What's happening here is inevitable. I guess, but these days, more still, and more people yeah. choose to live with an android rather than another human being. Does this development worry you? That makes sense. <laughs> hey. Everything's much easier with an android. It's true. They obey your orders without ever complaining. They can cook, discuss philosophy with you, have intimate relationships according to your desires. They never say no. Obviously, they are the perfect partner. Hmm. Everyone deserves happiness. Why deprive yourself of so-called moral reasons when a machine can make you happy? Many science yeah, fiction books tell the story of how machines become more intelligent than us and end up confronting us. Aren't you worried about that possibility? I understand the irrational fears about artificial intelligence, but I assure you that will never happen with a cyberlife android. <laughs> They're designed <laughs> to obey humans. <laughs> They're machines. <laughs> they can't ever develop uh, any sort of desires or, or form of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Little did you know. <laughs> oh. You can trust me. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. News is gonna take that one and go wild. <laughs> But that is so cool. I mean, this doesn't really pertain to the actual game, so it's not like they could have used that or anything. So this this is probably like a trailer or something that they used before the game, but an interactive story. Yeah, I'm not going to do those. If you guys want to see it, actually, this might be the last one I do of videos. I want to go to the other ones. This video may turn out to be kind of long, but I really do want to like check these out. This will be the last one we do. If you guys want to see the other ones, go for it. Marcus! My name is Marcus. Yes, it is. My name is Connor. Connor. My name is Kara. Kara. I am one of them. This cool. is our story. So cool. I think who Kara is, or how I would describe Kara, depends entirely upon who's playing her. Because you have the option to make her multiple different people depending on the choices she makes. Okay. But I think she, she does start out incredibly naive incredibly innocent and kind of hapless i'm sure we used to be friends before i was reset. see her and kara don't again. look the same person who's character i just find that I they don't look the same empathy not she's exactly a person who really she, she just comes from her heart you never leave me right promise you'll never go i promise alice looks different too <laughs> all of them Are don't look the me? same wait a minute leave her alone Kara, leave her alone the really beautiful thing that i've I've had the gift to be able to do is to essentially build a person from the ground up because that's what she's doing throughout the game and with every experience she has and every person she meets she's building you know first emotions and then the sense of judgment and it's sort of an exploration of what it is to be a human don't worry Luther and I will be right here oh he's Luther Maybe I don't know the actor. It doesn't look. See, they don't look the David same as their like have, have game counterparts really exactly. Intriguing and engaging. He picture looks almost the same. Though. Near future, where we rely upon androids for a lot of our service class business, our the the, uh, 
the class that serves us, that helps us, that handles our, that is our baristas and our drivers and our housemaids and what is humanity, where we tap into it, how and why we treat each other the way that we do. And um, my character Marcus has a really int intriguing journey. Becoming deviant, realizing that he actually has feelings and human qualities inside of him and it's a really incredible ascension into becoming fully realized and coming to terms with what you actually deserve better than this in life. And not only do you want it for yourself, but you want it for your peers. We've come here to demonstrate peacefully and to tell humans that we are also living beings. All we want is to live free. You know what, this thing, Dad, is not your son. It's a fucking oh, that's, machine. I think oh, that's that his son. A oh. group that feels marginalized, so cool. feels disenfranchised, feels like they deserve and have earned access to themselves and the environment around them and are trying to figure out a way to articulate how to get freedom. Connor is analytical. Connor takes things literally. Connor. He starts in the beginning place where uh, he's very Connor. mechanical. Uh, he feels nothing inside, of course, and it's all just a system, a protocol that he's executing to get whatever he wants to happen, which is help humans stop deviants and to find the link between deviant androids. <laughs> we were designed to serve humans, not yeah, kill them. I remember licking everything. What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? Just say, I killed him. Is it that hard to say? Stop it! Stop! But of course, over the course of the story, oh, and that's the uh, bad deviant. Choices, okay. Connor can grow in many different ways. He can deviate from that procedure or not. The moment of truth, Hank. Am I a living being, or just a machine? I don't remember that. Wow, okay, it's so cool to see the actors that play it, but they don't look like their animated or their game counterparts, not exactly. Like, I find they look just slightly different. Connor, I think, matches up pretty well. Kara does not match up, in my opinion. She looks different. Um, Marcus, only minor dish changes like a little bit in the jaw uh, but like just minor stuff but it's pretty close uh carl didn't look exactly the same carl in real life looks a little bit older than his virtual counterpart but yeah just stuff like that i just what i was noticing but anywho we're not going to see the other ones we're going to come here Ooh. oh i like the soundtrack i'll probably buy all these too anyways they actually have like the songs Okay, these are all copyright, unfortunately, if I play these, so I can't do that for you guys, but you guys get to see it. Um, we're probably going to do some artwork, but I want to see this stuff too. Wait. So wait, I can get them in different costumes and stuff? Are you serious? I just want to try this. Kara? I don't... Wait. Oh, cool. It tells about her, and you can see the character. Kara is an AX400 model marketed in 2032 by Cyberlife. The AX400 is designed to take care of the housework and look after young children. They can speak 300 different languages, cook more than 9,000 dishes, help children with their homework, and play with them. This model is highly popular because of its ability to get along with young children. I could see that. After technical difficulties on the assembly line, which should have led to her disassembly, Kara was sent to a store where she was quickly sold for the first time. She was then resold and changed hands several times before being purchased by a certain Todd Williams. The name Kara is thought to have been given to her by Alice, but it's quite possible that it was Kara who first whispered his name, her, this name to Alice. <sighs> Having been damaged following what Todd describing as a stupid accident, Kara was sent for repairs several times where her memory was reset on each occasion. Wait, so this means, so, oh sorry, uh, this means some interesting things. So what we just saw, the short film with Kara that they gave her name right there and my argument that her Alice gave Kara the name it actually might have been the case that she was already given the name Kara and then Kara told Alice and Alice then told her and like, ah, it's crazy, but still, 
Wow, so Alakara was defective from the start then. That's a crazy thought. What do you think of this car? Isn't that it? Sorry. <laughs> it's a crazy thought, ain't it? Ain't it? Hey, Kara, Kara, eyes here, eyes front. <laughs> yeah, she looks a little spaced out there. Dude, the characters look so realistic too. That's so crazy. Sorry, I'm not getting the controls here. I don't know how to zoom out. Anyways, um, let's see. Oh, wow, there's a little bit. Wait, what is that? It's Marcus. Oh, I want to see that. I want to see, like, his disassembled version. Oh, dude, that is so cool. Dude, that is so cool. That is cool. You're cool. Oh, what does it say in his eye? That is so cool. Okay. Having been critically damaged, Marcus was thrown out with the rest of... Uh, this disused and disposed machines literally putting himself back together again and took huge active will and some salvage parts took a huge active will okay I get it then he just looked classy in this in this suit for him he just looked plain downright classy I think he looks good in that suit not bad but we already know about that so that's cool I got so much money I can buy a lot <laughs> all right yeah, her is, is a character that fascinates me, too. Whoop. Okay. So, yeah, North is a WR400 model, marketed by CyberLife under the name Tracy. This is a model reserved exclusively for authorized clubs selling the charms and company of and androids, including the famous chain Eating Club. North is ready to make any sacrifice in the name of the android cost, fuels by, fueled by a profound hatred towards humans for personal reasons related to her past. She dreams only of her people's freedom, whatever the price. Cool. Dude, I love that. And the detail to the faces is so cool. Simon, too. He's somebody I wonder. Which one is this? Must be his original design. Yes. Did I not get him? Oh, there he is. Simon is a PL600 model, just like Daniel, designed to be family domestic assistant. Uh, nobody really knows what led Simon to Jericho, and he himself has never explained it. He is one of the oldest members of the group when Marcus arrives in Jericho, and as such, his opinion is respected and listened to by everyone. Cool. I would like to see who does, who's like the face behind Simon. I would actually like to know. Because he looks vaguely familiar too. I don't know where I've seen it. Oh, I haven't unlocked some characters apparently. So versions of him, the president. Oh, yes, I want to see her. Chloe. Oh, that's so cool. Kamsky, uh iterated on his famous Chloe models uh, many times, uh, refining and improving, but he prefers to spend his time with the original design, the very first to pass the Turing test. Cool. Well, why are we zooming in? I wasn't trying to zoom in. I'm sorry. That's a little awkward. I'm sorry. Sorry, Chloe. That's okay. All right. Um... Oh! <gasps> Really? Sumo? <laughs> we can see Sumo? Let me see Sumo. Ah! Sumo is a St. Bernard belonging to Lieutenant Anderson, an adult male, but he weighs 170 pounds and is 29 inches at the shoulder. Despite his fearsome size, Sumo is a gentle giant. Aww. They say dogs resemble their owners, and Sumo is no different. Gruff, big, powerful, and intimidating, Sumo's fearsome exterior makes a sweet, loyal, and noble nature. I love him. Ah, oh, that's great. Oh, I love it. Sumo. You're amazing, Sumo. There's so many people that did it. What is that? Was there an electronic polar bear at that? Dude, that's freaky. That's freaky cool. Dude, what is coming out of its stomach? Oh. Ew. Ew. What happened to this? Is this just like a prototype experiment of some sort? Okay. 
The URS-12 is one of the series of models from 2030, developed by CyberLife to recreate extinct or endangered species. We read about that. The aim was to equip zoos, particularly in large cities, to allow children to discover animals that no longer exist. Leatherback turtles, several species of great apes, elephants, and polar bears were produced rapidly with particular care in reproducing the smallest detail in appearance and behavior of wild animals. One of these bears was purchased secondhand by Zlatko as part of many experience. Oh, that was in his house? I didn't even see it. Where was that? Oh, that's crazy. And then those guys. I do kind of want to see her character. Hers was interesting. After this review on Connor. Connor is also on my list. Don't worry, we'll see him. I want to learn more about her though. <coughs> Lucy is a KL900. Was she like a more advanced first unit or something? Excuse me. Uh, especially adapted for providing social care. She was designed to help broken families, victims of tense trauma, or psychological disturbed individuals. After being violently assaulted by a psychotic patient, Lucy was left for dead. Despite a, s a severely damaged skull, she managed to come around and save herself when she remembered an android who had told her about Jericho. Oh, I thought she found a Jericho. Maybe not. Wallace trading, uh, Wallace tending to Jericho's android as best she can, she is gradually, gradually realizing that her psychological stimulation module allows her to pre-compute upcoming events, offering a glimpse into the future. That's so cool. Yeah. Man, so she was attacked by her patient. See, I, I wondered, like, why her eyes and her face were like that. I wondered what had happened to her, but man. Oh, that's so crazy. It's so weird and crazy. So she was like a psychiatrist droid. That's crazy. All right, cool. Whoop. Sorry, I'm not getting this right. Well, okay. Neat. I really... Ooh. There are so many to check out. What are you... Oh, these were the droids that were in the building. And they got a pigeon. Are you serious? I want to see this guy. He was the one from Zalt, uh, Zaltko's place. Zatko. Zatko. Oh, you look so cool. If this was a horror game. You'd be terrifying. Those eyes. Oh, it's those eyes. This would have made like a cool horror like a, uh, creature in like uh, if you made like a robot horror game just those eyes though dude they're so haunting uh, my controls are bad <laughs> during its experiments Zaltko has modified dozens of androids to create monstrous but functional creatures as many of them are deviant uh, they are horribly aware of their terrible fate condemned to wander in the penumbra of their creator's madness they see Kara and Alice as their last breath of hope dude that's so cool that is so cool. Ah. Uh. Okay, this is the end of the list. I want to see the pigeon. What is the pigeon? I want to see this. Oh, uh, let me see it. Let me view it. Oh my gosh. Uh, driving from rock dove, the domestic or urban pigeon can weigh on average between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 kilos and have a lifespan of 5 to 10 years. The phobia of birds, which Lieutenant Anderson has self-diagnosed, is known as ornithobia. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> You're delightful. I love it. That's so cool they added this part. I like a pigeon. Oh, that's great. That is so great. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? No, no, no. What's your name? What's your name? That's so great. Okay. Now, there's many other... Whoop. Oh, I backed out too far. Uh, there's many other characters, but the one we have been waiting for to say is our boy Connor. The android sent by CyberLife. Let me view him. There's our boy. Connor's a prototype name 
the uh, named the RK-800, created by CyberLife. Its initial goal is to assist human uh, detectives in their investigations by offering them... Wait, what is he doing? Oh, that's cool, dude. Where does it go? What did you do with it? Okay. Uh, investigation by offering them technological assistance. He's also equipped with social module, which is specially developed to create the ideal partner capable of integrating into any team. The Connor model includes a physical simulation software based on the analysis of elements of the crime scene. He can thus reconstruct past events by cross-checking the evidence at his disposal. At his disposal. It is also the first model to offer the analysis of biological evidence in real time by direct sampling and ingestion of samples. Ugh, still didn't like that. The first time a Connor model was used in real life conditions was part of the investigation of deviance. No date has been given regarding its use by police forces on a larger scale. Oh, Connor, you look great. You look great, Connor. Such a classy dude. I love his costume though, like the way it lights up and everything, like I would like to see somebody make a real suit like this, like you can see the materials it's made out of, but nobody can seem to really reconstruct it, like, ah, oh, I would buy that costume, I love that costume, it'd be awesome to cosplay as like Connor, but I'd like to see it made exactly the way it is in the game, but I have not seen any exact copies of this. Dude, I love it. I love it. I love how it glows. Sorry, I didn't mean to zoom in there. I am not getting the hang of these controls at all. Like, I cannot control this well. Sorry about that, Connor. I hope that wasn't awkward for you. Is this awkward for you? Is that awkward? Huh? I look a little upset there. Man, the detail. Ah, oh, dude, the detail. How did they do such detail? Ah, oh, I don't know. Ah, oh, it's so cool, though. I do want to see Hank, too. Hank is our guy. I gotta see it. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Hank Anderson is a 53-year-old police officer. Uh, valediction of his police academy, he quickly distinguished himself through courage and intellect, solving many difficult investigations. Though he looked uh, set for a brilliant career in Detroit police force, he suffered from some kind of cruel setback. Anderson slowly sank his al sank into his alcoholism and an unpredictable even suicidal state of mind which earned him multiple warnings and disciplinary penalties always respected and regarded highly by his former colleagues who know who who know what a brilliant officer he was but also feared for his bad temper and dry humor anderson seems to just want to be left in peace he has little esteem for humanity in general preferring the company of his dog antisocial he only ventures out to frequently sleazy bars uh one last detail he hates androids not anymore he loves connor <laughs> connor we are now bffs cool all right, sorry for the awkward zooming. <laughs> I'm not I'm not controlling this well. I mix up the uh, joysticks so it zooms in kind of weird. Cool. Oh, dude, I'm so happy. Uh, actually, it'd be neat to learn a little bit more about her. Um, I'm going to try not to make this episode go much further, but... Okay. No description? There's nothing? Oh, show details. Oh, there we go. Uh, Alice is Todd Williams' little girl, age nine. She has lived alone with her father since her mother left. She seems timid and lonely, living like a shadow in the big house where the, uh, the oppressive presence of her father lurks. Sad and silent, she takes refuge in novels, which she devours whilst holding Timothy, her suffered fox, which she takes everywhere. When Kara returned to the house after being repaired, the little girl seemed strange, strangely diff distant. Oh. So she wasn't always like that then. Man. <gasps> Luther! Hey, I just want to see, what was Luther's main purpose? Like, originally, like, what was he doing before? Luther is a TR-400 model. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking like, uh, 
a Terminator T-800. That. <laughs> All right, just thinking that. Anyways, Luther is a TR-400 model designed for strength and endurance, specialized in moving heavy loads. Commercial applications include laboring, docking, and general haulage. Luther doesn't remember much about his time before Zalco. Okay, so he didn't remember anything. Like the other machines, unlucky enough to find themselves in Zalco's workshop, Luther was modified to serve as a personal assistant, security, and muscle for Zalco's operations. Having served Zalco ruthlessly, something changed when Luther met Kara and Alice. He disobeyed Zalco and embarked on the life of a deviant, choosing to spend his newfound freedom protecting his friends on their journey. Aw, oh, dude. Aw, oh, dude, I love this guy. I love this guy. Uh, I love this guy. Oh, stop zooming in. <laughs> Why does it do this to me? I just do not have the controls right. Anywho, cool. Alright, so we... I, I guess I don't have many questions about the other characters. We already know much about them, so... Well, that's so cool you can buy them. Sorry. Uh, like, there's not much more information added to these, right? Yeah, it's just basic. Oops, sorry. So we are saw Simon. Um, actually, let's find out just a little bit on her, Amanda. I don't know much about actually. Amanda is a handler of the Connor series, responsible for investigating the Deviant issue on behalf of Cyberlife. Connor reports to her through a graphic interface, allowing them to stay in in constant contact. If Amanda is an advisor and guide for Connor in this investigation, she also has the power to deactivate him at any time. So, I'm still curious, is Amanda alive or is she dead? Is she an AI program? Is she alive? Am I in like direct communication with Amanda? I'm really confused on her. Like, I'm not getting enough information about Amanda. Okay, I really don't have much else I want to know about these characters. Except for one more. <clears throat> oh, we didn't see this one. Who's this? Oh. Uh. Oh, this was one from Jericho. Some androids were dis uh, discarded so long ago and have uh, disintegrated so much that it's impossible to tell what their original function was. Marcus encountered uh, Phileas in a dump of disused oh, deviancies, and Marcus also and urged him to find Jericho. Place. Oh, it's him! Before shutting down permanently. Oh. Cool. so many wait is that oh wait is that lady up there she uh the psychiatrist one as well uh lucy is like a different version of her oh, i see this guy he looks weird oh dude he's missing his arms what the whoa what am i looking at somebody cupping your back <laughs> it's more industrial cupping but that's weird oh you would also make for a horror creature in like a cool video game. Dude, your face is like melted. During the experiments, Salco has modified dozens of androids and created monsters by function. Okay. Okay, it's the same thing for this guy, so it doesn't say much on him. Oh, interesting. Is this like Lucy? I want I just want to know real quick. Oh, she's from the Eden Club, okay. Uh, the WR-400 models are most advanced design of female sex partners. These specifically developed models are equipped with functional uh, genitalia and are designed to fulfill uh, f all fantasies from the most common to the most exotic. These very sophisticated models can mainly be found in Eden Club, a chain of android sex bars scattered throughout the country. The W400 can easily be customized to alter their appearance at will, uh, catering to the tastes of any client. Sexual intercourse with such machines does not fall under prostitution and is not prohibited by any law. 
that opens another conversation too. Like we do have prostitution and stuff in our society. Um, by doing this, it would probably stop that. But is this a better solution? I just, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, wow, that's that's just it. Okay. But I don't think she's the same. Let me just see. That's as far as I can zoom in. Oh no, here we go. Oh, okay. I, I mean, if her eyes were clouded black is and like her head was removed do you think it's the same lady i think it is what's with her eyes too there's something weird with her eyes i don't know what but okay sorry 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 okay here we go so anyways cool he was the door droid from the trailer but i didn't see him much else all right that's pretty much time here so uh, I'm not going to go into it much more. Uh, we still got one other thing we got to see still. Which are magazines. Is this like a full comic you can go through? Oh, these are the magazines I looked at. If I collected all of them, what would have happened? I missed a lot of magazines. Dude. Huh. So I could have just collected and read them all at the end. Oh. That would have been neat to know, but I think it was cool how we, like, got it. Oh, who's your favorite character in Detroit? Okay, we're going to do this. I know we don't have much time, but I'm going to do this. All right. Um, Connor. Uh, was there a moment in Detroit that resonated with you personally? Uh, many. Uh, what was the toughest choice you faced in Detroit? Mm, accepting Alice's identity with Kara? No. Being pacifist or violent with Marcus? No. Deciding to shoot Chloe with Connor? That one. Cannot connect to... Uh, right, that's... Forgot about that one. Right, it's this... Okay. Interesting. Cool. Okay, so that's basically all our bonus stuff, but I was gonna buy... Um... One of these... Ooh, because we still got a lot of points. I could buy all of them, technically. But this is the one I like the most. I want to see that. Oh, there's so many. They're like concept arts for the whole thing. I love these. That's so cool. Sorry if I'm going through these a bit fast. I didn't mean to. We're running a little low on time and all this, but... Oh, I just want to see it all. This is so neat. So it's images from the every chapter. These are the actual people's faces, aren't they? They're just like added on. So yeah, this has got to be like the concept art that they use to create the characters. Dude. 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 Oh, and then Connor and Hank. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that is so cool. I'll probably buy all of them. Let's do the first one. Dude. That's con that's really Connor right there, isn't it? I like those jacket designs. Dude, I like that last one. And the one in the middle. Last one in the actually the last one. I like the last one. That's cool. Dude, I want one of these jackets. That's so cool looking. Ooh, ooh, that's nasty, dude. Huh. Oh, the deviant robot. Guards, weapons. Dude, this is so cool. Ah, oh, I love it. That's so cool. This is in the extras. Todd. Yeah, the curved screen TV. Unfortunately, he didn't have one there. I'd see where all your money went. <laughs> wow, look at this. Looks real. I don't know who... Oh, I can hide the overlay. That's so cool. Huh? That's supposed to be like Kara? That's so cool. Oh, that is so neat. That doesn't look like Kara, but still. Oh, that's so cool. And that's Kara? No, that's not Kara. It doesn't look like Kara. I don't think. 
Huh. Intriguing. I'll do that one too. I have enough money to buy everything technically, so I'm not too worried here, but cool. It's all like in the police station. I can see how they were inspired by realistic stuff in order to create this. So is that supposed to be like Amanda the first take? <laughs> That's a great picture. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, let me just uh, hide the overlay in that one. Oh, that's so cool looking. I want that as my computer background. That's so cool. So we had the whole scene with Kara trying to find a place. I'm glad we didn't like threaten the, the guy in that one. Oh, that's so awesome. Wait, is this in the house that we would have like squatted in? If that's the case, that guy has a knife. I think it's a good thing we didn't. I'm so curious to find out the different like alternatives that would have happened here. That's cool. That's like a model of Kara, which she would look like. So they like modeled the faces onto like these characters. Oh, and that's the guy with the knife who would have killed me? Dude. I honestly want to know more about those different uh, routes I didn't take. Let's see. Oh, the paint shop with Marcus, the museum. Oh, that is so cool looking. Oh, it looks real in some parts. I don't know who drew all this, but they're fabulous drawers. Oh, that's so cool. It's pretty beautiful looking. Now this looks more realistic with all that junk in the sides. <laughs> ooh, 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 I like, me likey. Ooh, I like that. I like warm colors and multiple colors in an environment. I think that makes for like the coolest photos. Oh, dude, I love it. Oh, I love all of it. Oh, dude. I think therefore I am. Oh, that's sick, dude. Now that's a messy place. Oh, that's so cool. Like, the, okay, so the reflection on those DVDs is getting me. That looks near realistic. Oh, I love that. The attic. Carl. Yep. Yeah. His son. Yep. Yeah. That's supposed to be Marcus? I like the black version of that jacket. It looks pretty nice. Ah, there's Marcus. Look at snazzy there, dude. Huh. Hank, yeah, nice. Also Hank. Police officer. Cool. Oh, that's so cool. All right, I definitely want to see... Oh, shoot, not that one. I definitely want to see this one. Sorry, I know we're going over time by quite a bit. This is going to be a long episode, but there's so much to see. Oh, we can have the overlay off and just go through them. Nice. Oh, dude. I like the horror kind of themed of uh, images. That's so cool. RE9, look at that. Oh my gosh. These are awesome, dude. Was that Kara? I think that was Kara. Oh, dude, would that have happened if we would have like messed up? That is crazy. Nice. Oh, that's where that, oh, that's where that went. I thought he put it into his ear. And this was the concept for the eye change. So they came up with all these for the robots. Cool. Ah, oh, that is crazy cool. Wait. Oh wait, I looked at the wrong one. Sorry, this is the one I want to see. I want to see Zaltko's place. I'm just going to buy all these and go through each and every one. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. Oh, dude, the diner. The place we looked at. Oh, that looks so cool. This looks like it could have been a movie or real. Like, oh, the paint. Whoever drew this is great. Like, that looks real. 
that looks like a real picture but somebody just like added a painted like filter to it oh wow look at that then our chase Uh, all these places are so cool. That must have been our robot that ran. Actually, we never saw anything of that. That's cool. I could see that happening with our drones today, too. Detroit Field and Sky. That's so cool. I like that. Dude, Marcus. Oh, I like that one. That one's cool. Finding Jericho. Dude. Should have a picture of like the Assassin's Creed jump. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. Ooh, I really like the colors of that one. That's nice. Nice. Dude, nice. There's Lucy. So impressive, dude. Oh, is that like the brain? Oh, that's weird. Cool. Love the jackets that people came up with. Ang like having those angles and stuff in a coat is so cool. This is the one I've been working towards. Let's see it. Because, yeah, this is going to have, like, some scary stuff, I imagine. Like, oh, dude, that's crazy. Oh, I love that. That must be Luther there. It does look like a haunted mansion almost. Dude, what is that? What is that? Look at all the hands in the corner. Oh, dude. Freaky. The droid off in the corner. Who is that? Is that supposed to be Kara? I don't like how he has a camera set up. That's kind of... Droid in the bathtub. Kind of see him. That is so freaky, dude. There he's like operating on her. The polar bear, the one that I didn't see. I still didn't see it in the environment. I must have missed it. Luther. Luther looks different. Luther looks like the guy that plays as like Iron Patriot and uh, War Machine in the Iron Man movies. With this picture he does. <laughs> oh, that was their idea for Zalco. I think, yeah, the first one's a better look. He looked ner normal at first. Oh, then. Oh, that must be Hank's house. <gasps> sumo! Ah, sumo. Sumo. <laughs> oh, it's a mess. Every house is so messy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so great. Okay, that's all for that one. Then we got this one. Huh. Actually, sorry. Interesting. Okay, I don't recognize the faces they added to these ones. Um, they used one girl's face for almost all of them. Interesting. Oh, and then the shop. Looks a little different than what they originally designed. Like, the clothing they're wearing is all different, where in the game it was all the same. What am I seeing here? Okay, just like clothing styles. Oh, I love these ones. Was our inf infiltration? It's so cool looking. So they drew out all these before the game. So crazy. I like that those shirts and everything. Dude, these uniforms look great. Okay, we have some more, but unfortunately, I think I'm probably gonna end it here. So if you guys want to check out more. Get it yourself and uh, play the game and buy some of this stuff and see what you think. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going to end this here. I got more games I got to get to today. We got to finish some old series that I started in the past, so we're going to get to it. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you stuck around for the full hour and 15 minutes for this uh, video, um, thank you. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Um, there's just a lot of extra content, apparently, so... Hey, there's some great stuff in here. And if you want to see more, definitely check it out yourself. But with that, uh, I'm going to go back to the main menu. We don't have Chloe anymore. Aw. I wish she was here. I used to love everything she says and, like, the way she stares at me into my eyes.
Sorry. <clears throat> so, anyway. <laughs> no, I really did. Uh, I love this. I liked everything about this game. I like that you can choose your own path. And I chose the path I would have definitely gotten for it. Except leaving that lady outside the door. We never were able to fix that with Kara. But I was able to save Connor too. And I'm so thrilled about that. And you guys probably saw him in the last episode. He was actually live and everything. So I'm happy how this went. So anyways, with that, I'm going to end this here. Hope you guys enjoyed Detroit Almost Human. And um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you've seen. If you would like to see and hear about more of my videos, hit that bell notification to let you know when any of my new content comes out, which there will be a lot of new content in the future. I have my new gaming desktop, so it opens many new opportunities, and I'm so excited. So I hope you guys are excited. And uh, with that, I'm going to end it here. So. Thank you so much for watching, guys. My name is Not Lad, signing off. Later, guys.